I've got Server Core up and running here, and I'm just going to log into it. The version of Server Core in Windows Server 2008 had no components of the .NET framework. So although we could run IIS in Core, we couldn't support any ASP.NET websites. And that's changed in R2, and we've got some components of .NET 2 and some of 3 and 3.5, but still none of the graphical user interface. So this is a very, very light install of the operating system. And in fact, if we want to do anything to configure IIS on this machine, we'd have to use the command line tools like OCS Setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a sort of a typical batch file. And in order to do that, I need to use another of the core features called Notepad. And I can have a look at a batch file. In this case, I want to look on my D drive. And this all looks vaguely ancient, doesn't it? So here is that batch file. And you can see that we've got both OCS setup commands and DISM commands. DISM is Deployment Image Servicing and Management Tools. And that's new for Windows 7 and R2. It consolidates the core functions and multiple tools found in the Windows Automated Installation Kit. And we can use DISM to find out how IIS is actually installed at the moment. We can now scan this list and see that what's enabled and what's disabled. So health and diagnostics enabled, HTTP logging enabled, server side includes disabled. This is all a reflection of the very modular nature of IIS. But of course, it's quite difficult to configure IIS like that, particularly if you're not an expert like me. So what I tend to do is use the nice friendly IIS manager. But we can't run that on here because we haven't got any kind of graphical interface because we haven't got all those bits of the .NET framework. So what I have to do is use another machine. And I'm going to switch over to my domain controller now and connect to IIS and manage this machine remotely from there. So if I go to here, I just need to go to Start, Administrative Tools, bring up IIS Manager, create a new connection, connect to a new server, in this case my core machine, hit Next. It's going to ask for some credentials. as you'd expect. And now I'm looking at my server remotely. We can see and configure everything that we want to here. We can also have a look at the content view and go down to the site here and look at the default website. And we can see all of our code, VB, ASPX, all sitting happily inside there. But much more importantly, we need to actually check that it can work. So I can just go to here and start and connect to it. If we fire that up, we can see we've got a professional looking website, images, links, We can contact them if we want to, phone them and so on and so forth. So now we've managed to turn Server Core in R2 of Windows Server 2008 into a platform for really rich web applications. And that gives us the advantages of the reduced patching and reduced attack service that Core brings. and means that those websites can be far more available than they would be on a full install of Windows Server 2008.